My gran used to try and force me to drink Guinness for the iron. You would have to drink 100 pints of Guinness a day to get the recommended daily allowance of iron in pregnancy, which is 30 milligrams per day, purely from drinking Guinness. So please, please don't drink Guinness in pregnancy to try to reach your iron requirements. I feel like we could have left that just at please don't drink Guinness in pregnancy. There are probably much safer ways to get your recommended daily allowance of iron in pregnancy, things like soybeans, lentils, kidney beans, or iron fortified cereals and oatmeal. Other options would be to take a prenatal vitamin that has iron in it. Iron can be a little bit nauseating and constipating, so sometimes I'll have them switch to one that does doesn't have iron in it as long as they are not anemic. Other important things that you should make sure are in your prenatal vitamin or that you're getting in your diet is 400 micrograms of folic acid every single day. This is important to lower the risk of neural tube defects and most prenatal vitamins have at least that much in them. You also wanna make sure you're getting at least 600 international units of vitamin D and 1,000 milligrams a day of vitamin C. Is it true you can have a tiny bit of wine, a tiny bit of caffeine, and a tiny bit of fish? I've heard it very harsh rules for and against. The science suggests that very small amounts of alcohol during pregnancy probably are not harmful. However, we don't know where that exact threshold or cutoff is for when alcohol does become harmful or increase the risk of fetal alcohol syndrome. You're right that the science says a little bit is probably okay. It always concerns me because we don't know what that little bit is, like when it becomes not okay. So for that reason, we still recommend avoidance of alcohol during pregnancy. Don't drink too much caffeine or your child will have ADHD. This is definitely not a risk factor for ADHD. Drinking caffeine in pregnancy has never been linked to ADHD in the child after they are born. Is it true that you shouldn't drink coffee during pregnancy? I've heard a lot of different takes on this. Current research shows that low to moderate intake of caffeine in pregnancy is safe and not associated with negative outcomes. So we recommend two to 300 milligrams of caffeine a day or less. That would be like 150 cups, 150 cups. That is probably way too much. There is about 150 milligrams in a cup of coffee. So like one to two cups of coffee a day is fine. If you're new here, I'm Mama Dr. Jones. Please consider subscribing if you're learning something or at at least hitting like on that video. We are so glad to have you here today and we will keep going with the interesting pregnancy do's and don'ts. Pixie Jen, I heard you're not allowed to eat soft cheeses. I might cry if this is true. Well, Pixie Jen, you don't have to cry. Soft cheeses are only off limits if they are unpasteurized. Pasteurization process kills the bacteria that we are worried about in soft cheeses. So just look at the front of package, make sure that you're finding some that are pasteurized cheeses and you should be fine. Mackenzie Ash says, I heard that green tea interferes with the absorption of folate, so you shouldn't drink it while you're pregnant. Green tea has catechins in it, and catechins do cause decreases in the effectiveness of your intestines at how good they can absorb folic acid. However, as long as you're not taking your prenatal vitamin with a whole bunch of green tea or drinking a whole bunch of green tea before and after every time you take your prenatal vitamin, it's probably okay. The second half of Mackenzie's question is that she heard you can't use several skincare ingredients while you're pregnant, but her doctor told her just to avoid retinol. What is the truth? I also just tell my patients to make sure they're avoiding retinols. And the reason we recommend avoidance of retinols is because oral retinol is extremely, extremely teratogenic or damaging to a fetus. It causes severe birth defects. That being said, there's no evidence of facial or topical retinols causing this. However, because it is so severe when it happens with oral intake, I still recommend my patients avoid it on their skin during pregnancy, just because why take the risk of being, you know, that first person who ever experienced this? It's just not worth it. I'm going to link my favorite scientific article on skincare and pregnancy below and have you check that out. In the meantime, if you'd like to tell Hiram, I could collab with him on my channel about skincare and pregnancy. It wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt my feelings. I would love to talk to him and us come up with, I don't know, a joint routine for skincare and pregnancy where I make sure everything is safe. <laughs> I, I'm at a loss for words. Kesha says, I heard that you can't eat cinnamon. I was told by someone that you couldn't eat cinnamon and I thought it sounded ridiculous. Then during my pregnancy, I had a fancy drink with cinnamon and later that day I had a miscarriage. It was very early on. I know it's probably a coincidence and had nothing to do with this. I agree, this is probably a coincidence. There's no evidence that cinnamon and the amounts that you have in a dietary intake are going to be associated with miscarriage or pregnancy loss of any kind. We do recommend against taking cinnamon supplements because they are like 
3,000 times higher in the amount that you would get than like a drink or using it as a spice in food. So cinnamon in food and drinks is fine, but don't take cinnamon supplements. So Sailing says, don't eat pineapple or you will miscarry. It's a very strong belief here in Malaysia. You cannot eat anything with pineapple in it while you are pregnant. So this one is absolutely just a myth. There is no association, no concern about pineapple in pregnancy. And in that same vein, it also isn't going to make you go into labor if you're trying to induce your labor. I've had people who ate tons and tons of pineapple to try and go into labor, and that's probably not going to work either. And if it does, it's probably going to be a coincidence. We had tons of other food questions, so I just wanna quickly run through some of the other things I tell my patients about food and pregnancy. Fish is fine, but choose fish with lower mercury content. So avoid things like tilefish and shark and swordfish. If you want to have those, limit them significantly. If you want exact details, I'll link the CDC website below, which has like serving sizes for each fish and things like that. And then on the side of tuna, just try to limit that to once a week or less. Make sure you're washing your fruits and vegetables very well, especially if they're homegrown. Some of the bacteria and stuff that can be harmful in pregnancy live in soil. And then we'll move on to deli meat. This has long been something that people are told they can't eat while pregnant. And the listeria a connection. Listeria is a bacteria that can cause significant problems in pregnancy. That connection is a lot less clear recently. And actually some of the most well-known and documented listeria outbreaks have been in foods that weren't deli meat. So what I tell my patients is just to be safe, heat your deli meat up in the microwave and then pay attention to any FDA recalls of foods for listeria because you wanna make sure that you're avoiding that. So Brittany says, don't exercise at all. Your uterus isn't fully developed during your first pregnancy and that's why you could lose your baby easily. Uh, that is definitely a myth and I will actually move on to this next comment because it kind of goes into that same one. Is it true you shouldn't jump while pregnant? And Taylor responds, I seen Sean Johnson do handstands and get pregnant, oh well. So while I definitely wouldn't recommend that the average person be doing handstands during pregnancy, we absolutely agree that exercise is important for people who are pregnant and you're not going to cause a miscarriage by jumping. If you want more detailed information on exercise and pregnancy, I will link to the exercise and pregnancy video that I did with Sean Johnson not too long ago and you can learn a lot more there. Chronically Brooklyn says, I've heard you can't ride a bike while you're pregnant similar to the misconception of not riding a bike on your period. It's fine to ride a bike during pregnancy. Once you get to the third trimester, it may be a little bit difficult and you wanna make sure you're being safe about it, but there's nothing inherently about a bike that makes it not okay to ride in pregnancy, so. You're good. No hot baths. For my first pregnancy, I had a candy thermometer that I used to keep the tub water under a certain temperature. So baths are fine, but we do recommend avoidance of hot tubs in the first trimester. And I'm gonna move into this next comment of don't go in a hot tub because it can send you into preterm labor. And that's not actually the reason that we recommend against hot tubs in the first trimester. We know that increased body temp, so if somebody gets a very high fever, can be associated with early pregnancy loss or fetal defects in the first trimester. I take a little bit of issue with this blanket recommendation against hot tubs because it's based on that increased body temperature literature. And although that's absolutely true, I don't know that I'm on board with the idea that when you get in a hot tub, your body temperature gets up above like 104. I, I don't think that that's true. However, because we don't have good data on it and because we know that increased body temperature in someone who's pregnant can cause problems in the first trimester. We just recommend against it until you're out of the first trimester. So there you go. I know you're seeing a trend here that I see every day in my life is we need more actual research on these things. Juliet Cat says, I've always heard you shouldn't lie on your left side. I think it's the left side because you'll cut off blood flow to the baby. And Julie says, I didn't hear until my fifth pregnancy that laying on your left side is safer because if you lay on your right side, you can compress the vena cava. So in the back, just above your vertebrae on the inside is the aorta and the inferior vena cava. As a uterus grows and gets heavier, if you lay on your back, it can compress those major veins and arteries of the body. Well, the blood flow to the placenta and to the baby does decrease, but that would also, if you think about it, if your uterus is compressing your major vessels here in your back, and that's decreasing blood flow this way, it's also gonna be decreasing blood flow this way, which this way is your 
head. So you're going to start feeling lightheaded and maybe even nauseous, like you are going to throw up if you lay on your back so long that those are compressed. So as your uterus grows, we definitely recommend that at least by the third trimester, you're making a concerted effort to sleep on your side. The left side is the most conducive to full blood flow because of the way that the uterus lays in the pelvis. However, laying on your right side is perfectly fine too. So just make a concerted effort not to go to sleep on your back. Now, I wanna add here, because I see this in my clinic all the time, if you wake up on your back, you should not be urgently concerned that you've harmed your baby. It is highly unlikely that you could lie on your back for so long that it could cause harm to the baby and you not even feel bad. Don't raise your hands over your head because it's going to put the umbilical cord around the baby's neck. So a lot of people liked this comment and I think it's probably because a lot of people have heard this said. I've heard it in my clinic so many times. Putting your hands above your head absolutely does not increase the risk that the umbilical cord will be wrapped around the baby's neck. This is called nuchal cord. And actually about one in four to one in five babies, maybe even more than that, are born with a nuchal cord. And most of the time, it doesn't cause any problems. The umbilical cord has two arteries and a vein in it, but they are surrounded by really thick stuff called Wharton's jelly. And the purpose of that is to keep the umbilical cord from compressing and cutting off that blood supply. So most of the time, unless there is a really tight knot or it's wrapped so tightly that that can actually compress, or there's a problem with the cord and it doesn't have enough Wharton's jelly, most of the time it's not gonna cause problems. That car seat belts become unsafe. I've seen products such as the bump belt that attach to the seat belt and basically pull down onto your thighs. So seat belts can become less safe in pregnancy because of the way they might lie over the abdomen. I do not like the idea of adding any products onto your car seat belt because those haven't been crash tested or safety tested, but I do recommend that you pay attention when you're putting your seatbelt on to how it's lying. Don't bring it, especially as your uterus gets bigger, straight across the abdomen. Make sure that it's kind of flat and lying underneath the belly. So it is super important to wear your seatbelt during pregnancy, but just make sure it's not going straight across your abdomen. I'd much rather it go underneath your belly and kind of lie against your hips or the top of your thighs. Does that make sense? Okay, y'all, I hope that you learned something today. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed and hit that like button if you learned something in this video. I have linked a ton of resources in the description if you wanna check those out. I have also linked another video right over here if you want to learn something more today. I will see you next Monday.